Hi there, this is Elaine. So today's story is called Ruby and Robbie the Reindeer, and this is a special Christmas story. You could maybe say it's part two of Ruby the Reindeer's story that I wrote last year, because it has all the same characters. So, first of all, let's get you really really comfortable. So pull up the covers, wiggle your toes, stretch if you need to, and then a really big yawn. And then let's do some breathing. Now if you've listened to me before, you know, I always tell you that breathing's a really good way to help your body and your mind to relax. So let me show you how. So take a nice deep breath in through your nose like this. And then breathe out through your mouth like this. I'll do it again. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Now you do it. Breathe in, out. One last time. Breathe in and out. There you go, that was easy. And you might even notice your body starting to feel a little more comfortable. You might feel a little calmer, a little more relaxed. So let me ask you, are you ready for the story? Are you really, really ready? Ruby the reindeer was waiting for the letter from Santa to tell her that she could pull the sleigh on Christmas Eve. Now she was getting really excited, but she also knew that there were lots of other reindeer who wanted to do this job too, and that she was still quite young and inexperienced. Anyway, as she was getting ready for reindeer school, she heard the postman drop a letter into the letter box. Daddy, Mummy, she shouted, there's a letter in the box. I think it might be from Santa. Sure enough, it had Santa's logo on it. Ruby grabbed the letter and tore it open and started reading. Dear Ruby, thank you very much for helping us pull the sleigh last Christmas and for applying to do it again this year. But I'm very sorry to say that we now have Rudolph back and so we do not have any places this Christmas Eve. Hope you have a good Christmas. Love, Santa. What? what? Oh no, said Ruby as a little tear started to drop from her eye. Why, why does he not want me? She said in a really sad voice. Mum and Dad came over to comfort Ruby, who by now was sobbing really hard. It's not fair, she cried. I so want to be part of Santa's team. Daddy tried to explain that Because Rudolph was back, there was no place for Ruby. He also tried to explain to her that not everything works out the way you want and there are sometimes disappointments. What's wrong with me? She cried. Why doesn't Santa want me? Daddy told her there's nothing wrong with her. It's just someone else got chosen. And that someone just happened to be Rudolph, and he's the most famous reindeer. 
Ruby didn't believe this and she stayed in her room for three days and three nights. She wouldn't come out. Come on Ruby, this is silly, said her mum. Leave me alone, she cried. She was so sad she didn't know what to do next. Ruby's best friend Robbie wondered why Ruby was not at school and on his way home he called in. She won't open the door, said Ruby's mum. She thinks she's not good enough and that's why she didn't get chosen to be part of the team on Christmas Eve. But that's not true, said Robbie. Robbie decided to call Santa and see if there was another job that Ruby could do, a way that she could help. She dialed Santa's number and a big jolly voice said, Hello, this is Santa speaking. Hi Santa, this is Robbie. Hello Robbie, how are you? I'm great Santa, but Ruby is very sad and won't come out of her room after getting the letter saying you didn't need her to help on Christmas Eve. Yes, yes, said Santa. We just had too many reindeer pulling the sleigh this year and Rudolph's back. Well, said Robbie, I know you have lots of other jobs to do on Christmas Eve, like packing the presents, getting everything ready, working out the flight plan and weather predictions, time zones, and I just wondered with all of that stuff, maybe Ruby could help with some of that. She's very good at geography and maths. I'm sure she could help you. What a great idea, said Santa. I will talk to the boss of the Santa Weather and Planning Office and see what they could give Ruby to do. In fact, I think there's a very good job going, working out the different time zones so as I arrive just after midnight everywhere I go. I think I start at New Zealand and move forward. You have to be really, really smart to do that job though. Oh, Ruby is very smart, said Robbie. Well, ask her and tell her she should get here by the 23rd, the day before Christmas Eve, because we've got some training to do first. Okay, said Robbie. By the way, Robbie, we could also do with some help from you too, with making sure that the presents for all the kids around the world and that we don't miss anyone. Robbie smiled and said, I can certainly do that, Santa. See you on the 23rd then, and put the phone down. Robbie ran as fast as he could back to Ruby's house and told Ruby's mum and dad about her conversation with Santa. That's wonderful, said Ruby's dad. But we have to get busy planning the trip. Remember how she nearly didn't make it last year? Lucky the Sky Bus leaves here on the 22nd and I'll book it now and you will both get there in time. Ruby's dad dialed the number and made the booking. Ruby and Robbie live in Greenland and it's one full day to get to the North Pole. Robbie went upstairs to Ruby's door and knocked. Ruby, Ruby, I talked to Santa and he has a job for you. You can work in the control room and make sure the reindeer get to the countries just before midnight. All the countries. Ruby opened the door and looked at her best friend, Robbie. Really? She said. He wants me to help? Yes, said Robbie. And he says he needs someone smart who can work out the time zones. It is such an important job and it's all yours, Ruby. Ruby didn't know what to say. She was so pleased and so happy that she would be at the North Pole as it was her very favourite place to be at this time of the year. 
Your dad has already booked the Sky Bus and we're leaving tomorrow at 8. I've also got a job, making sure all the kids around the world get their present, said Robbie. Ruby gave her friend a big hug. She was so happy again. And they agreed they would meet at the Sky Bus in the morning at 7.30. So that night, Ruby got herself organized. She made sure her antlers were clean and polished, that her hoofs were shiny and black. And even if she was working in the control room, she had to look good, right? She found her Santa hat in her red nose piece. She put them in her bag, as it was only the reindeer who pulled the sleigh who could wear them, but she thought she would take them anyway. She was so excited and could not wait to catch the sky bus tomorrow. It was a long journey to the North Pole and she would get there just before bedtime. Just like last year at this time, Ruby had trouble sleeping. Her dad put on her favourite bedtime story on YouTube and I think you might know who tells the story. And as usual, before long, Ruby was fast asleep. The next day, Ruby woke it was very light outside and the sun was shining high in the sky. There was snow everywhere. It looked like a white fairy land. And she was very excited. It was only seven o'clock so there was plenty of time to get to the sky bus. And soon, after a nice healthy breakfast of oats and fruit, Her dad walked her to the bus. Robbie was already there. He'd also cleaned his antlers and blackened his hoofs and they were both very handsome reindeer. They jumped on the bus and waved goodbye to Ruby's dad. Merry Christmas, Ruby and Robbie, he shouted. Have fun. Ruby recognised the driver, it was Felix the Fox, who had helped her get to the North Pole last year. Hi Felix, she said. How come you're driving the bus? Just a little job for the holidays, said Felix, so as I can buy more presents for the kids. Have a seat, Ruby. It won't be long before we get to the North Pole. And the bus took off down the winding road. Chug, chug, chug went the bus over the mountains, down through valleys. This little bus was doing well when soon as they entered into the valley of walruses, they saw some flashing lights. And right in the middle of the road, there was a number of walruses all piled up on the road in front of the bus. There was no way that the bus could pass. They're all lying on top of each other and they all looked like they were sleeping. Felix got down from the driver's seat and asked the big walrus who was standing at the side of the road, what on earth has happened here, he said. Hey Felix, said the walrus, it's Willie, how are you? Oh, hello Willie, I'm good, he said, but I'm taking the sky bus to the North Pole and we need to get through. Well, hey, we've got a problem, said Willie. You see, all the walruses have just been at their Christmas party and now they're all having a sleep. I can't move them until later today, he said. Ruby and Robbie jumped off the bus and tried to shoo them away, but couldn't budge the mound of walruses all over the road who were snoring their heads off. It looked very funny, but 
How on earth would they be able to get to the North Pole in time now? A couple of hours, we should be moved, said Willie, as he slumped down next to the other walruses. Pretty tired work having a party, you know. What are we going to do? Ruby said to Felix. Felix got out his map and saw that this was the only way through. Oh no, said Ruby, head in her hands. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I have an idea, said Felix. How about we call on Annabelle the polar bear and see if she can get her friends to come? Walruses won't be around long if there are polar bears there. That's maybe a bit mean, said Robbie, but it might work. We just need to make sure that Annabelle scares the walruses and doesn't plan to eat them. Willie and Annabelle are friends, but some of the other polar bears are not as friendly. So Felix called Annabelle. He explained the problem with all the walruses asleep on the road and that the sky bus would not get to the North Pole in time for Christmas unless the walruses moved away and let the bus through. I thought maybe you and your friends could scare the walruses into moving on. I can do that, said Annabelle. Not sure that Willie will be too happy with me, but I can see it's for a good cause. We will make sure that Santa gets to visit all the kids around the world. Annabelle called all her friends and they made their way to the Walrus Valley. I can see them coming, said Ruby. And she and Robbie sat on the bus as they watched the polar bears walking up the road. There must have been about 50 of them. One of the walruses who was lying in the pile smelt the polar bear and opened his eyes. Hey, everyone, he shouted. Wake up, I can smell polar bear, let's get out of here. They all grunted and grumbled, but soon all the walruses were moving away. And even before the polar bears got close, the walruses had all gone and the road was clear. That was easy, said Annabelle. Nothing like a good smelling polar bear, she laughed. Thank you so much, said Felix. We need to make up time now. Can I give you a lift back home? That would be great, said Annabelle, and all the polar bears climbed into the bus. It was a bit squishy, but soon they were dropped off at their home in the polar bear valley. Thanks so much for your help, shouted Ruby and Robbie. Now we will get to the North Pole in time. The little bus picked up speed and soon they could see the lights of the North Pole and the silhouette of the reindeer as they were getting ready for their big trip. As the bus entered into Santa's yard, Santa and his helpers waved and welcomed Ruby and Robbie. We were waiting for you, said Santa the big smile on his jolly face. Ho, ho, ho! Let me take you to the place where you can work out our flight path. And he led Ruby up the stairs. Robbie, here are the presents. You have to work with them so that each kid gets the right present. So Robbie and Ruby worked very hard until they had everything ready for Santa and the reindeer to leave. Rudolph came up to Ruby and said, I'm so sorry for taking your place this time, Ruby. I hope you understand. Yes, yes I do, said Ruby, and maybe one day I can be part of your team again. Of course you can. But remember, you have done a really good job here, and we know that every kid will get a visit on Christmas Eve now. Rudolph and the other reindeer got harnessed up and all the presents were in the sleigh. Ruby handed the flight map to Santa. It's all ready, she said, with 
with a big smile on her face. Thank you so much, Ruby. We really appreciate your hard work. Robbie and Ruby waved to Santa and the reindeer took off into the air. A trail of coloured fairy dust sparkled around the back of the sleigh as they moved off into the distance. They waved and waved and then Robbie and Ruby jumped into a passing cloud just to have a little rest as they were both totally worn out but very, very happy. Maybe, maybe next year I could pull the sleigh, said Ruby as she started to yawn. I'm just so glad I'm here, she said. Night night, said Robbie with another big yawn. Not long, the two little reindeer were fast asleep. So sleepy, so tired, so happy. Night night. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.